Thirty-two percent. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another fine production on the DJR Network. Coming at you right now is idiots that are brilliant. We're missing one of our idiots, but we have a stand-in for him. He will be joining the discussion a little bit later. He's a special guest. You'll know that guest when we're ready to introduce him. But joining me this morning is the one, the only question mark, Charles Whedon. All right, he said his good morning. No, there it is. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And also joining the fray is Mr. Damian J. Rogers. And hello. Joining the party, Mr. Stone Lord. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another fine presentation of Idiots That Are Brilliant. I am your semi-host, Lou the God. But we're ready to rock and roll. Roll and rock. Give you what you want. Starting with that Ahsoka trailer. God damn it. That shit was marvelous. Yeah, it, it looked really good. And uh, a little bit of news to go along with it, which I just recently found out. Nope, uh, nope, 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 nope. We will save that for the other part of the show. Oh, we're not ta- we're not discussing the news about the Ahsoka uh, information. No, no, we'll give the name who who is Mister Thrawn later. Not Mister Thrawn. You have to use his full goddamn title. I'm not going with Grand Admiral Thrawn. You fucking dullard. He's a that's his full fucking. Have some title. respect for the rank, sir. So. Yeah, exactly. I have some goddamn respect. I am not a military man, so I say fuck your rank. Oh my god! But I mean, no. He- for a lot of folks who don't understand, and God damn it, Charles gets his one dollar ninety nine cent only fans tip. Where's my highlighter? Yeah, <laughs> leave it to Charles to bring us the money. <laughs> Thank you, Mister Slong. Okay, all right, all right. Just for the last goddamn time, it's not. You happening. don't have to show your penis. Oh it's shit, not... who was that? We don't know. We'll save that for it's later. Not... It's not happening. Only fans is not fucking happening. <laughs> All right, look, man, back 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 to the circle back, circle back. The be- ah fuck. That beginning of the trailer is kind of cool where she throws her little sabers into the fucking thing and does that. There's a scene that ends Rebels that's also in the trailer which I kind of like that they're doing live action, but they changed mm-hmm. Sabine's outfit from the tra- from the animated to the live action which eh, okay no biggie i mean clothes i mean people wear different clothes every day all the time so i mean yeah she could have i mean clothes, so whatever but they could have left her in her mandalorian gear but it is neither here nor there mm. i like the inclusion of hera the question is going to be will they introduce her son who is force sensitive is that the the Twi'lek uh, woman the, with the green yes, skin? Yes, green woman. Yes. Yeah. Played by Elizabeth Weinstead. Yes. Holy <laughs> shit, that's her. Yes. Yeah, because I, I I looked up the the cast on IMDb and I saw her in the list, but it wasn't saying who she was playing. And then yeah, when she's I saw playing the, Hera Syndulla. and when I saw the trailer again, I saw her speak, and I was like. Where wait a minute. Oh, so that's who she's playing. But I yeah, did her, but I did but I didn't know the character's name. Hera's lineage plays a predom- predominant role in the Rebel Alliance. Okay. Like her father was so against the Empire, he stood up to Palpatine and Vader. I believe he got slaughtered by Vader in uh in, in one of the books. Fuck, I don't re- in Lords of the Empire. Lords of the Empire, oh boy. If they ever adapted that into a fucking movie, oh boy, that would be so brilliant. I'm more is interested. That, is that I'm... one that still counts, or is that one of the... No, it's fucking... one of the canon ones. One of the few they left in. Okay, no, I, am more, I, am, I am more focusing on a name drop that they did in the trailer. What, the where... heir to the Empire? Yep. Where Ahsoka, where Ahsoka had name dropped heir to the Empire, which is uh, what the Star Wars fan community considers to be the true sequel trilogy of Star Wars, because that is the book trilogy that introduced 
Thrawn to Star Wars. Yo, I'm just glad we're getting some more Sip people. What? I had no yeah. idea Ray Stevenson was going to be in it. Neither did oh, I. Neither, big old neither beard. Did I. Yeah. Fuck it. I'm, I'm just glad he's a bad guy with a lightsaber and he's going to fight okay. Ahsoka. <laughs> I mean, look, with Ray, when Ray Stevenson showed up, the first thing that popped up in my head was like, holy shit, that's the guy from RRR. It's just, um, you he guys don't that? know. Yeah, I keep he hearing had, about this. What is it? RRR, uh, um, R- it's a Bollywood movie on Netflix. It's it's like. Ah, it's makes like sense because the poster I saw was like, that looks like a Bollywood movie. Yeah, it's 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 over it's over like three hours long, closer to like four hours, closer to like four hours. And I mean, three hours of that four hours is dance sequences, probably. No, yeah, fucking much. Bollywood. Yeah, yeah, but uh, Ray Stevenson is in the movie, and it is a fucking amazing movie. Wow, I, I wouldn't mean, didn't know he was in that. Yeah, yeah, Ray Stevenson shows up pretty freaking early in the movie, and he's a villain in the movie. He's a oh, bad guy. Uh, and uh, villains a lot. Yeah. And uh, yeah. no, it's just, no, when I saw him in the Ahsoka trailer, I was like, wow, I wasn't expecting him to be there. And uh, I don't know, is he is he playing a Sith? Is he playing something else? I mean, what? He's a Sith because he's using, he uses the Force, and so does that other. That doesn't necessarily other... mean that he's a Sith. <laughs> Well, there's no more Inquisitors in this timeline, so he's got to be a Sith. Unless well, they're all, going by a different It's all name. the same timeline, dude. It's just... It's same just black wild. robes, red lightsaber. I would not have to red, assume. Red. It's not red. It's not red. It's orange. You sure? It was orange. Uh, according was to orange. Mr. Emergency Awesome, he said that shit was red. No, it was, like, I don't care what the fuck. I don't care what the fuck. I saw red. What, what, what Emergency Awesome was saying, that shit was orange. Mm, I don't think so, but whatever. I know my damn colors, dude. That shit was orange. That was as dude. orange as that was as orange as Kenny on Damien's shirt. <laughs> okay, but um, and then the other exciting news is Grand Admiral Thrawn will be played by his Rebels character Lars Mikkelsen, the brother who of apparently Mads is Mikkelsen. who apparently is uh, Mads Mikkelsen's brother. Now I don't know if it's his older brother or younger brother. I don't know. So. Don't know ages, but I like the fact that they got him back. Yeah. We saw Zeb. He's a Rebels character. We saw him in the last episode of The Mandalorian. I'm wondering if they're going to have him in the Ahsoka show, too. It'd be cool if they get the whole band back together, minus Kane and Jarrett, because, well, he died in the last season of Rebels. What, Kanan died? Yes, he dies in the last season to save the group from an explosion so they're obviously not going to bring back freddie prince jr no he well maybe he in a flashback or a force ghost no he can't be a force ghost because you had to train to become a force ghost not every that's what pisses me off with fucking leia becoming a force ghost and oh yeah yeah i know i mean (laughs) that fact kind of pisses me off though it's so stupid you're gonna train to be a ghost (laughs) Yeah, it's just, it's just like Leia is not even a fucking Jedi, and yet she was able to use the fucking Force like it was nothing. Like she, she, she trained. She, Luke, Luke and her trained a little bit. She, she little bit, little bit. They trained she, with their mouths in the movie. I seen oh, it. Oh my god! And then it's just like she oh, used the fucking it. Force <laughs> in the in the vacuum of space. To pull herself back just, into... No, we're not going to go there. Uh, we're going to move on to the Indiana Jones trailer. Yes. The dial I of thought Destin- it was... Yeah, the I'm dial intrigued of De- by this movie. Yeah, it looks Which has awesome. Mads Mikkelsen. Apparently. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're right. It does, it, has, it does have Mads. Yeah, and apparently Mads Mikkelsen is playing a villain. <laughs> and a Nazi, it seemed like. Yeah, He's but then again, but, a villain but, most of but the time. no, it's just I mean, in the Indiana Jones movies, they're always going up against Nazis. I think the only yeah. one where they don't, the only ones they don't go up against Nazis is Temple of Doom and Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Because in Temple of Doom, they go up against cultists that worship some death goddess, and then uh, uh, what is it? Um, t- Wait, Temple she, of the, uh, she wasn't of the a Nazi in that movie in Kingdom uh, of the Crystal Skull. Uh, no, no, she was Russian. She was a Russian. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. yeah, I barely remember that movie. And I, yeah, for good reason. Uh, it was it was a it's bad movie. So but no, no, they, they were dealing. They were going up against the Soviets in that movie. But um, 
interesting trailer. I kind of like that it's present day. He's ready to like. This is his last hurrah. He's said it. But the interesting news that came out of celebration. Wait, it, it couldn't be present day. It'd be like a hundred. Well, not uh, present day like that, but sixties. Uh, it's taking place in the sixties. Okay. Yeah, I can live with that. Yeah. James Mangold is directing a Star Wars movie set twenty five thousand years, and it's the first Jedi ever. Wait, what? James Mangold is directing a Star Wars movie set 25,000 years before everything. It's considered the first Jedi, and it's going to be a, an epic biblical tale. Okay. So it's like, like Jedi, like, Jedi like, Cavemen? They, no, no, no. Hold, hold on a second. They actually kind of like touched on, the, on this backstory in the Knights of the Old Republic video games talking about uh, what was it? Uh, it was uh, the hyperspace war or something. Um, it was it, like like there was um, the origins of the Jedi, and then it was like talking about, like like there wasn't even the Sith. That was like originally there was just the Jedi, and that there was an offshoot uh, like a faction that like, like splintered from the Jedi, and they called themselves the Dark Jedi. They went to Korriban where they interacted with the Sith. And the Sith weren't like dark, like dark side force users. They were an entire species of aliens well, that called themselves the Sith, and they were native to a planet which was originally called Korriban. But George Lucas didn't like that name, so he changed it to Moraban. And apparently, they have. The they, yeah, what a, what a fucking shit dick. Yeah, yeah, he, he was a fucking asshole when he did that. But uh, he. Um, they they have red skin, they have tentacle beards, they have yellow eyes, and they are force sensitive. And um, I'm the, not sure that they're doing that. I think they're doing more of. I don't know what they're gonna do because now keep in mind what I'm basing this off of is all legends content, yeah. not canon. Well, so. Heir to the Empire is considered legends. So yes, they did. They did canonize. They did canonize or can, uh, parts of Thrawn's origin. They did can they didn't canonize all of it, but they did canonize some of it. Um, and I believe they are in the process of canonizing Knights of the Old Republic because I'm hearing rumblings that Knights the, in White Satin, the first Jedi bullshit, is going to lead into that era. They're going to do. Dude, Knights of the Old Republic I'm only sure takes there's... place like four thousand years before the events of the Galactic Civil War, the original trilogy. Fine. But you're talking about something that takes place twenty five thousand years prior. Okay, to that. you do a story or two there, and then you fucking bounce to the Knights of the Old Republic era. You don't have to like. That's still a gap of thousands of years. Okay, we're getting a fucking no a new Ray movie that's set fifteen years in the future. The <laughs> The Knights of the Old Republic. Sorry, I meant boo. Okay, look, we're going on a whole tangent about shit that doesn't even even remotely connect it to Ahsoka. We're and going I'm sure, on a tangent. I, and I'm sure Jim is pulling his hair out of his head at this moment, and he's Good telling us to move but the fuck on. Jim is pulling gray hairs. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, take your time. Take your time. No reason at all. Just take your time. No reason. Yeah. Who enjoyed the Diplomat trailer? I'm in... I like this little series that's coming out. I like Carrie Russell. I do. I think she's. I think she's a fun actress. Um, Secretly loves Felicity. <laughs> I'm sure I half of it. these people didn't watch the trailer, but you know. I mean, I'll admit she's. She. I mean, Carrie Russell is cute. I mean. Uh, I meant he liked to watch the show. Cuteness aside, the trailer seems intriguing. I it's never a, watched it. Felicity. Oh, I'll Something tells me he's he didn't, he didn't watch it. He binged it. <laughs> what you, did any of you check out the trailer for the simulant? Yes. Looks intriguing. I also find it hilarious that the simulant uh, is starring... <laughs> Robbie Amell? No, no, no. Well, I mean, that's interesting that Robbie Amell is in it, but it's also starring uh, Simu Liu. <laughs> I was interested. Oh. I was interested until I realized it wasn't called the stimulant. <laughs> Yeah, like yeah. fuck this noise. 
Also, I mean, look, I mean, I have to, I mean, I have to, ask, like, ask to confirm. Are we going to fucking watch Barbie? No. Fuck oh. Me. All right. <laughs> thank just God. Laugh I, found, I, finally I, con- right. I finally convinced Lou that we don't have to watch brand new pieces of shit. Yeah. Oh, they, man. They, thank, thank whatever that we're never going to watch Barbie. Like, thank God. I was going to be thank here you, for that. Thank Chris, thank Chris Farley from, thank Chris Farley from Tommy Boy. Thank John Belushi from Animal House. Hey, right. <laughs> I think so, we're talking about different things. How many of you saw the first Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse? Um, I did. No, I didn't watch it, but I'm intrigued to go back and watch it now because of the way the second movie's looking. The That's like the CG movie. Miles Morales one, right? Or like yeah, yeah, half yeah. CG animated yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, just the animated. I was not a fan of the animation style. I, I didn't like it. But you enjoyed the movie. The story was interesting, uh, but the animation style kind of, kind of. Di- I thought it was distracting. I, I didn't really like it. He likes real men with the swords. Like I said, I'm intrigued by it. Will I watch it? Maybe. No CGI uh, sword play. We never discussed how Aegon Targaryen's conquest is becoming a movie. For H, uh, I think it's gonna be H for an HBO movie or maybe theater movie, and then Wait, it's gonna so lead into a series. Oh, so it's gonna be a movie first, then lead into a series. Okay. Yes. Sounds like for the how Odyssey. many seasons? Who will know? Uh, the Ben Affleck movie Hypnotic looks fucking amazing. Yeah, I did watch that one earlier. Actually, that does look good. Uh oh, like no in, to shitty Fickner. Batman. Yeah, it looks like it looks. <laughs> Say it no looks, to shitty Batman. It looks like poor man's Inception. That's what it looks like. Uh oh. Say I, no. I, I, say no to yeah, shitty. No, say no you. to shitty Leo. I, I, I got. I, I get what you mean. Like I get that kind of vibe from it, but concept is considerably different. He does Dunkin' yeah. Donuts commercials, pretending to be Man Damon. We had the Blue Beetle trailer also this week. Okay, okay, I'm in, look. I'm into that. The Blue Beetle movie started out great. It looked interesting until they said Batman's a fascist, and that's when they lost me. I was oh. like, really? Did we not learn from Green Hornet? It's just like, really? Who cares just... what is said by George fucking Lopez? It was probably improvised. An it's improv just, scene. Uh-oh. It's like you. It's like, come uh, on! You, shit, did I you really have to go there? there. It's just George like, Lopez, look, huh? Another... They had they had me in the first inning, and then they lost me after that. It's just like, come on, George Yo. Lopez, another raging Latino like John Leguizamo. <laughs> what I'm are looking you doing? To <laughs> He's inserting his comedic tunes. Of course you are. Yeah. It's, look, he's, look he's it, it started. It started with. It started with Knights of White Satin. That turned into Knights of the Old Republic, and then we just kind of moved yeah, forward from there. Yeah, yeah. And then we got finally we got to say no to shitty Batman. Yeah. Uh, well, ben Which, hey, hey, Ben Batman. Affleck wasn't that bad of a Batman. He wasn't. He bad. is. He is up there. As ben that. Affleck was the bomb in Phantoms, yo. Jim Cavill <laughs> carried. Jim <laughs> Cavill right. carried him. Dude. <laughs> Charles. <laughs> Jim Cavill carried him. No. Uh, <laughs> Extraction two. Coming June sixteenth. I'm intrigued to see what they do with this movie. I recently, I when I saw the trailer for Extraction Two, I decided to take a day and watch the first Extraction on Netflix. I it's a good popcorn flick. It it wasn't bad. It wasn't great, but it wasn't bad. And I will admit, Extraction Two looks fun. I'm yeah, not entirely and- I'm not entirely sure how he survived. So, that is going to be answered in this movie. Yeah. It, it, it's but, going to be a good question. How yeah, does this man survive? But, uh, but we'll find out. Yeah. We'll find and, out. Yeah. And Correction. to top off the trailers for the week was Secret Invasion. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Secret Invasion. Which that trailer looked fun. I mean, I, I'm, I'm excited. Oh, man. I am so glad. It's got Winter Soldier vibes written all over it. Espionage. Yeah. All that goodness. Sounds like sex with chloroform. No. Ah. It sounds like a good TV show that you're going to skip because you don't have Disney Plus. Yeah, well, um, I mean, excuse me, asshole. I just hope it's more than Excuse me, episodes. asshole. I do. Excuse me, asshole. I do. Well, okay. then you'll be watching it with us. Really? Yeah, well, look, I mean. Sounds like sex play to me. 
Secret I Invasion. Secret Wait. Invasion. Oh, fuck. Ooh. I don't know if Damien's not caught up. God, I guess it'll just be me and Whedon. Every time, every time I see something related to Secret Invasion and I see Amelia Clark on screen or in the trailer or something, I can't, for him. I can't help but just laugh at that because I remember what Amelia Clark had said regarding superhero movies. No glove, no love. Her a nice paycheck, and she's like, "I'll be in your show." <laughs> yeah, but no, she had she had said that she thought superhero movies were stupid. She said they were stupid, and now hey. she's doing one. <laughs> and then she sees the offer come in, and she's like, oh, thank you. Yes, yeah. sign me up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But... Yes, sir. Do you like it raw? <laughs> All right, let's just get rip the Band-Aid off. Fucking Mandalorian this week was one of the weakest shows I've seen in a long time. Okay. okay. The middle was great. The book ends fucking stupid. Like, I'm like sorry. <laughs> fuck, no, no, I love Jack fuck Black. Off. Fuck Jack Black and Lizzo in this. Yes, this was... <laughs> and you know what? Honestly, I didn't even like Christopher fucking Lloyd. Doc I thought he fit. I thought he was fine. Yeah, no, Christopher wasn't. Lord was fine. Aside yeah. from the fact that you're like, God damn, you're like, you know, you know he's old, but you're like, fuck, he looks old now. He's like 84, though, so. I just wasn't feeling So, the by definition, he is old. Yes, that's what I'm saying. It's like, I know he's old, but it's just like, he just looks so old. <laughs> no, I'm getting tired. <laughs> what? I'm getting tired. Want him to be old. young again, damn it. <laughs> I'm getting tired of Star Wars with all these stupid fucking forced cameos. Like, okay, yes, they may be Star uh, Wars fans, the, but you don't have to put them in the fucking movies and the show. Uh, but there's okay. so many that it, like you can get past. Jack Black and Lizzo was just like, it seemed like a very high-budget SNL sketch. It was okay. weird. Okay, who, who, who the fuck is Lizzo? She was the queen. She was his wife. I the got one who that. could barely read her lines. Okay, I got that part, but who is Lizzo? Oh, she's a musician. Somehow, like, one of the musician. biggest musicians in the world. Is she a rapper, or is she an actual musician? I don't know. I yeah, don't well, even know. Who we, we talking about? You don't know. Now you know. Who we talking about? Who we talk, she, yes, she's, yes, he's a musician. She actually fucking plays the flute, among other things. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. So... And then I did not like the cop out how they gave fucking Katie Sackhoff, Bo-Katan, the fucking dark saber again. Oh come on, that is a loophole. Uh, come on, stop, stop. You know what I'm saying? Stop obsessing over that. Stop, stop. You know what I'm saying? There's, I think there's some deeper meaning under that. I'm sorry, Katie Sackhoff. If anybody knows what Katie Sackhoff looks like, you know what I'm saying? Knows damn well. <laughs> she she got that she dark can easily, saber. <laughs> she can easily get the dark saber. Easily. Okay, I, mean, I understand, Help. but. Many times, many times over, many Din, times over. Din, Din lost the dark saber. Her face. He was defeated, and he lost the dark saber. And then Bo grabbed it by to taking it. the enemy. I understand that. Yeah. I get that, but I feel that is a cop out loophole that they use. It's still a loophole. <laughs> like I didn't see them going that way. It's like why have Din Jaren beat? fucking Giancarlo Esposito which he was at Celebration I'm wondering if he's going to pop up in these final two episodes I still Probably. say I still say that he's he was extra- I still say that he was extracted by Thrawn no he's nope. not extracted by Thrawn yep he was I'm calling no. it now he was extracted no. by Thrawn he has his synthesizers and his crew out there somewhere and I'm pretty sure he has maybe a couple of Mandalorian that are loyal to him that did the Mandalorians it. were never Thrawn. loyal to him. I said a couple. Remember, there's different fractions out in the universe. They were never loyal to him because the Mandalorians are only loyal to themselves. Anyone outside of their like collective... They are collective, loyal to the person who carries the Darksaber. No, and they are he, loyal to whoever... Motherfucker, are you off. really going to argue this with me? <laughs> I've watched everything and you haven't. Katie Sackall can always get a damn dark saber. He doesn't have the dark saber anymore, so why would they be but loyal still, to him? That's all that matters. Of, you can have three or four people still loyal. It's like the Empire. They stayed. Thrawn is exiled to the <laughs> outer fucking regions. No Certainly one not, because he he's back. <laughs> yes, yeah, but yet he still has his seventh fleet. Hello. How does that happen? 
Lou's going to blow a blood vessel in his brain. Jesus <laughs> oh, oh. Wow. <laughs> Jim, come on in. Let's just do this fucking goddamn Your Honor. No, you this is the only time I, I, I was glad you guys are talking about Star Trek or whatever, Star Wars. <laughs> You Star my bastard. favorite Star Wars character is Captain Kirk. Play, play, play the you game. bastard! How dare you? So, Jim, oh, there's right, a 499 yeah. super chat. There's for a you, question for you. No. Question for Jim. What's the name of that coffee he's raving about? Available well, in K Cups. Well, let me uh, go uh, look to be sure then. I'll be right back. I have two that I would recommend thus far. So, Stone, have, were you able to watch Your Honor? Yes, after tracking it down, after finally tracking it down and figuring out that that yeah, we're going we're going right from the second season, which is I mean, well, you know what? But once I once I started and I realized okay, they were gonna do a little bit, and it was it, it was simple enough to where they gave me enough of the of the first season to understand what, what the fuck we were continuing on from. Okay, we're doing the first season. We're not doing the second season. All right, on to important stuff. Sheesh, Mister Stone. Jeez. Your shit was only available for the first season, but okay, let, let's let's get into it. Hey, yeah, does my mic first... sound good still? Yes, you're fine. It's good. You're fine. I lowered the gain because it's picking up the vibration of the computer off the desk. Um, the coffee I am drinking. Uh, um, super chatter. Hold on, let's put that. Oh, I can't. I don't have a mouse. I'm in the game. So there you go. The, the one I was raving about the other day was Green Mountain Coffee Roasters. Yes, K-Cup. Single origin Sumatra Reserve. Yikes. Fair trade certified organic. I didn't see that. Dark roast <laughs> coffee. Fruit. Very oh, delicious. Yeah. Um, it must Dark mean roast it's, Green Mountain is delicious. It, this is the Sumatra Reserved. It's specifically, you know, uh, harvested out of hippie shit. So... <laughs> Very delicious. Um, equally, well, equally as delicious, but not as strong, bold. And this is like a real fucking cup of coffee, a real cup of good coffee out of a K cup. It's the only one I've found so far. Um, actually, shockingly, another organic brand, which I had to buy. I had no choice because it was across the street. It was an organic uh, French roast. I don't know the name of that, but it was similar, but it wasn't very good. But it was close to a real cup. This tastes like a real cup, and I got Gavalia Royal Dark Roast or Dark Royal Roast. It is equally as delicious, but not as full bodied. Um, yep, there you go. Those are K cups. And There's your K cup and reviews. That was Coffee Talk with Jim. K cups that are delicious here on Idiots That Are Brilliant. <laughs> I am not Vaclint. All right, so your honor. Stone, do you have your 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 book of notes? I mean, she asked if I go on. That's I'm ready. I on. I, it wasn't. All it was right, consensual. kick it away because you're the you're the man that uh. brings us together with the shows. Hold on, hold on. You, you, come on. Of course, you're gonna let Jim lead this one. Come on. What? No, I'm not. I'm a guest. No, 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 guy. I don't even the... know what the hell's going on here. I'm actually saving and quitting my game because I'm at the finale of it, and I really I can't pay attention to both. Well, it starts with Adam killing Rocco. Well, not in that order, but obviously that's the premise of this whole show. The boy killed another what, what boy. What a way. Is this what you guys do here? You just ran. Yeah, so it starts with Adam killing Rocco. People who don't know that don't know nothing. It's about a judge, like a straight-laced judge in his family life, and then his son accidentally the kills uh, I mean, a, a boy. Who happens to be named Rocco? Okay. You don't find that out till later. But anyway, I'm sorry. You, you lead. The, I'm. I'm just a guest. No, carry please. on, Jim. No, no, carry no, on. No, I don't wanna. Oh my god. That ain't right. Okay. Um. Can I? Can I? It's just, not fair. Uh, please, I, I want to be a guest. Please go ahead, Charles. Yeah, it's just I. I just want to say something, and I might be jumping ahead a little bit, but I just want to say that even though the show is about is about the judge michael which i still cannot pronounce his last name desiato what the fuck's hard about that you fucking you white man (laughs) 
<laughs> you racist Charles. <laughs> racist against a Scottish Italian. Oh, no. My bad. That's Whatever. That's the I'm other more guy. offended that Brian Cranston's playing a man named Michael Desiato. That bothers me. Yeah, but no, it's just his his oh, his, God, I did not like his, his son. Who's, oh, his son is the, such a bitch. Yeah, not, just not, not just a bitch. Not just a bitch. He was also <laughs> a fucking dumbass. Because yes, that yes, he was. His, his son, like he told his son, the very like when 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 his son specifically told him what like what what he had done. Like he killed again. It was like, oh my god, oh, I cannot believe you did that. Ah. But um he said, don't tell anybody. Like, don't tell what you did. You cannot tell anybody. The first fucking thing he did was tell his girlfriend, the teacher. It's like, are you out of your goddamn mind? Well, yeah. he tells the teacher because he needed someone to talk to. I he don't had fucking to get care. It off his chest, which I agree with the wrong person. But in his case, who does he go to? It was weighing on him heavy. You can tell. <laughs> and she was being the smart one in that scene. She's like, "Don't tell me, don't yeah. tell me." And he just, yeah. bear, bear. you, you <laughs> really can. Like, like, well, like, look, it's just like even in that situation, it's like she, like, now that she knows what he had done, she could technically use that information against him and his father. She could. Oh, she could. Well, she wasn't going to be like that because she was getting the dick. So. Okay, Which... well let me let me let me put it to you like this. During that whole situation with the bla- with the blackmailer, I was like, you know what? I think it might actually be the teacher, and she has a partner, and they are now blackmailing the father. Uh, can I, I just say that's what was going on? Can I, I just say this? Because I hear you guys doing a bit of jumping, and I yeah. just want to remind you guys to save the ending. Wink, wink for the ending. Don't yeah. forget about the ending. Yeah. Okay, uh, wink, wink. Just just remember that. Uh, anyway, please don't forget that. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but oh, no, it's, since it's... Damien put that up, and I am speaking now, real quick, I just want to point out that Grindle Ground Bisconti. We're gonna oh, have to find a biscotti with a biscotti. We're gonna have to find one of those coffee where you can put your label on a coffee, and we're gonna have to. That's our first merch. It's coming so soon. Becky's asking, why does it have to be blackmail? It's not like her purse was stolen. Ha-ha! The guy was a fucking dick. How he figured it out, I don't know, but it was intriguing. Oh, no, no, but the, 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 like the, the whole blackmail thing, it was pretty obvious when we found she out. She was making who, a racist joke, goddammit. When we found out Come who on, it, guys. when we found out who it was, it was oh, like, man. oh, my God. It's just like it, it, it should was be. It was, it, was, it was a low fruit. Oh, the guy, the the guy had a fucking dash cam. He had a fucking dash cam and recorded the whole fucking thing at the at the gas station. He had a fucking dash cam. What happened with that? Yeah, Did that get like, resolved this season? Yeah, yeah, the the um the redhead, I want to think Irish guy, shot Tony him. Curran. No. Tony fucking Curran, dude. When I found out he was in this show, I was like, fuck yeah. Look, I'm, I'm the single. only one who's seen season two, so this is hard for me. Yeah. Uh, but, 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 but the scene is there a scene in no. this season? Technically, no, you're not. Is there a scene in this season where they spend a lot of time somewhere? Uh, oh wait, maybe I'm confusing that Brian Cranston movie where he fucking plays the lotto. Shit. Yeah, you are. <laughs> <laughs> no, is there like a scene very similar to that with him and the mother-in-law um, finding out something you guys were just talking about? Is, is no one is no one going to bring up the fact on who is playing the mother-in-law? Renowned oh, character oh, actress. God. That bitch fuck Margot her. Martindale. There you go. <laughs> yep, that stupid bitch. I'm glad she got tore up by a bear. So that's a running yeah, joke on the in the in the idiots program, huh? Renowned yep. character actor Margot so, Martindale. Um we stole your honor from her is on showtime, <laughs> so you don't have to sub to Apple. <laughs> Why would you sub to anything? My father, what are you old? Like my father says that shit. Oh, you don't have it. Like he, he plays victim every time. He goes, "What's good on TV?" Hey, have you seen Your Honor? What's it on? What the fuck does it matter? But it, I'll tell him anyway. It's on Showtime. I don't have that. He says he says it just like that. I don't have that. Like, Look, man, uh, you don't need it, you fucking clown. Well, not everybody wants to be like us, Jim. Yeah. 
But it if makes you, life so much easier. I don't have anything. Stupid. But I have everything. Pay for what is worth paying for. If you are subscribed to Paramount Plus, you could pay two dollars more to get the Showtime package. Listen, pay for what's worth paying for. Your time is worth something. As a fucking consumer, not everything on that television is worth paying for. And some of those things, you're simple, simply, you even hating it is a value to that property. Just look at Velma. So fuck that shit. You are a commodity to these companies. Charles Whedon, get off your uh, anti-pirating fucking position is all I'm saying. Fucking watch what is there and readily available. Your voice is of value to these companies. Fuck that shit. You going to give them your money too for garbage? No, I want to taste that shit first before I buy it. Fucking right. Yeah, I'm Kenny from South Park. I Kenny, don't go. Is that what you're saying? I'm saying that? No. Now, back to your honor. <laughs> I think Lou just picked the only one on the show that can remember his name. <laughs> oh, I see. You're wearing oh, no, South Park. So he's just man. like, he just pulled a Maxwell Hauser. He's like, well, what's your name? He looks at a coffee Kenny can. I'm Maxwell ha- Hauser. <laughs> Kenny Cubman, Stan, and the Jew. Good for them. The Jew! Now, the mother was annoying as fuck. Are you talking oh, yeah. about renowned character actress Mads Milkinson? <laughs> no, I don't know. Milkinson. I'm Mads Milkinson. I have diabetes. <laughs> I don't know what the mother's name was called. You're, you're, you're making fun of one of Charles's most favorite actors. He had a crush on him for a while, too. <laughs> I do, too, but you said Milkinson. Uh, Mikkelson? <laughs> Not There's two Ks. Back. He's like, Lu- I don't know, Swedish? Lou's trying Norwegian. to talk. I don't know. This could be one of the shortest idiots fucking Saturday show ever. Oh, great. <laughs> I'll just leave then. <laughs> I'm Matt Nicholson. Why, why, not go, why not go into season two? I mean, we'll, we'll look. I haven't seen season two. <laughs> okay. Well, I can't wait for season two. Yeah, season two was next Saturday. Because I, I, I got a feeling that it oh, might Oh, great. Be, I got to lose a, another morning? Uh, yup. Uh, <laughs> I got a feeling that it's better. I mean, well, let me ask you this, uh, Jim. I mean, what? why do you, I mean, why do you think then? Because it seemed like, it seemed like there's a moment, there's a moment in season one where he was going, where he was going to <clears throat> take his son to, to turn, you know what I'm saying, to turn himself in. Yeah, and then when he, of course, realized that good, we're right back on track. That would be right where the conversation. That's actually pretty much where Lou left the conversation off after he killed well, the we guy. The judge tries yeah. to take him in, and then what happens? You were gonna say he sees who he sees who's the kid's father, of course, mm-hmm. and you know, and this and renowned this criminal, somebody Black Baxter. Jimmy, 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 Jimmy Baxter. Baxter. Jimmy, Jimmy Baxter. Baxter. Jimmy Baxter. Yeah. <laughs> and he's just like, nope, 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 nope. We're going home. We're going home. We're Turn gonna him now, Adam! <laughs> We're going to bleach he our entire ran legs. down the hallway and tackled them out of the room. <laughs> yeah. Dude, Adam, bro. So what's your question? Adam, so, oh, my God, Adam. What a fuck. So, I have a question for you next. Okay. Um, my, my, thing, my thing was, I mean... I mean, given that he—I mean, given that he is a crime figure—I mean, would you? I mean, was that the right thing to do? Um, to well, have you? Now that actually goes to my question: Have you seen season two? I've seen some of it. Okay, so that means you finished season one. Yeah. So that well, that's okay. Awesome. Well, I don't know what the fuck's going on, but either way, I think that means never mind. The whole wink, wink about the ending. I had a brilliant plan. I was hoping right. he didn't finish. We were making fun of Charles Whedon, who didn't finish, and we said, "Oh, I, we hope Stone didn't finish." And then we were just gonna make up a whole fake ending of stuff that never happened, and we were just gonna pretend whatever. But uh, anyhow, um, well, in season two, as you'll see, I can't. That's hard to answer because no, but see, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I know what, what you I would have made. That's, why, that's why I didn't to do. Is that's confirm. why I didn't want to ask it. But that's why I didn't want to ask it because I know, and, and and given and given what I and given the conclusion that I came to about season two, I just you know, anyway, I, I understand what what your what your difficulty with that is. But 
But my opinion, if I had, if I had to answer my own question, but, but, but wait, 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 without even knowing what happened in season two, I'd have already considered doing that. But I think I'd have probably opted to do what Desiato did. I'd have probably just pulled my kid out. Except everything I'd have done after would have been totally different. Um, but I oh, think sorry. I would have done what he did. Well, I would have just. It's time to hit the road, little dummy. Ah, oh, you would have left town. Yeah, it's time to get going. Wow. It's time to move on. Or, or at least make him going. leave town. What so lies uh, ahead, I got no way of knowing. No, 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 no. I got he got to be under my fucking eye for years and years and years till I know. Oh uh, yeah, going. especially because he's a fucking dummy. Like, oh yeah, go go to go across country. He lands just, up in another place and just tells someone exactly what he did. I keep the boy locked under fucking key in my basement for the next three to six months as I transition into a new job because I will start applying immediately for a better position in a nice area wow. and we're gone. And we're wow. gone. So there's a plausible reason why I'm gone. Uh, better job, better life, period. My yeah, wife, but you she's change dead. Your name. No, I don't. Nobody's got to change nothing because nobody's going to find out nothing. I, I'd have still had fun. Look, that'd have been Charlie's business. What happens next is Charlie's business. And you know what? That's it. If I'm not there as Michael Desiato, then I won't do the dumb thing at the end of this season that ends up fucking it even more. So everything about staying there fucked it up on Desiato and both Adam's part. So, um, yeah. I bet that's it. You're you're on their lock and key, but he'd have probably still escaped. He's he'd have probably still poked that fucking pelican girl. <laughs> she got fucking a scary pelican face. Broad. <laughs> you thought about um the Fia Sophia? Yeah. The, uh, yeah, she did kind of have a long face. <laughs> <laughs> like you got this fucking hot photography teacher, and you you throw that away. Yeah, Joy Division dancing motherfucker. What happened with her? Is that resolved in the first season? Because I don't even remember. I don't recall if it's even touched on in the second. Well, Charlie talked to her at the bar and paints that picture of, you know, you go to jail for fucking a minor or fucking a student. Okay. And then she scared her away. She confesses what Adam confessed to her. And that's how Charlie ends up knowing about the whole card. Yeah, he's like, wait, what? Well, well, hold <laughs> what are you telling me right now? Hold up a second here, though, because if there is a third or fourth season. Um, I think it was confirmed, too, as the last. Well, yes, this story and this look, this doesn't tell you anything about fate. Simply that this particular story is over at the end of season two. However... It, it's a completely wide open world they give you, so there should be more, uh, and there could there could and should be more is what I'm saying. So uh, whatever, call, considering whatever that is, let's just call it seasons three or four in the future of this franchise. Um, uh, there is room for this woman to be a major player again, as we've seen in shows like Ozark, where you have a character who was kind of paid off and scared away, who reappeared like a bunch of seasons later and affected something. So if she's not completely... Oh, her name is Hope Davis, annoying bitch. Oh, and I know that name too, so she's somebody famous. Sophia? Go. No, oh. Gina Baxter, the mom. Oh, the mom. Mm. Oh, then, then, then never mind. No, the Sophia is I played you meant by the teacher Lily that he fucked. K. How do we get to that? All right, well, never mind then, jerk. You know who else was annoying in this fucking show? Was you. that Nancy, Nancy Castellello, whatever the fuck her last name was? You mean Dime Store Girl from uh, Tulsa King? Uh, Castello. Yes, that's, that's who I thought it was at first. And I still I recognize this woman from something, but I, I haven't looked it up, so I don't know what uh, that is. No, wait. The one from Tulsa King is the psychiatrist from Step Brothers, right? Or is oh yeah, her yeah, her I definitely know from things, but oh maybe it is. I don't know. I get the two confused. One of the two, is, yeah. one of the two is the strength from Step Brothers. Let's find out. What's the show we're talking about now? Your Honor. Yeah, I'm fairly sure that was the chick from Tulsa King. Yo, I I've seen her in a bunch of stuff. Mark Margalos was in season two. Oh, Gina Baxter is the mom of the Baxter. I'm such a fucking idiot. I thought, ugh, when you said mom, I thought it was the wife that died of Desiato. No, 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 no. Amy Landector. Decker. Uh, looks nothing like what she does in other things. 
Let's see. Yeah, she doesn't look like she's doing much. Oh she was in a show called, uh, was it Dog Eats Man? She was that was a great show. Transparent. I bet you liked that one, Damien. Oh, these fucking people <laughs> next door. <laughs> what was it? Go fucking Transparent? Jump off a bridge, you motherfucker. Ah, uh, with Jeffrey Tambor. Ooh, who jumps off a bridge? No, I wish my fucking neighbors would take his whole fucking family and jump off a bridge. Oh, thank goodness. I th what? Allegedly. Allegedly. But I'm so glad I, I said, like, transparent, and then you're like, jump off a bridge. I thought we were going to be a fucking hate speech. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> yeah, this chick was yeah, in that, nothing. Well, I knew it. Chet Hanks was in this fucking show, too. He's always playing a fucking drug addict. Who? Oh, uh, that's who that was? Oh, uh, what? In... Fucking, uh... Um... His buddy? Was his, was his name? Yeah. Was he Joey or something? Yeah, Joey. Fucking, yeah. Big, big, big. Well, actually, that backs up kind of what I was saying. I don't see him here in the cast list. That backs up what I was saying about uh, a, a minor character, because I feel like he was a minor character in season one. He um, was. Pretty much. Much bigger character later in season oh, two. Season Spoilers! Two. Oh, cool. I look forward to starting. I thought I might start season two today, actually. Uh, no, I gotta finish. So that's not a spoiler. That's a teaser. You know, you gotta figure it out. Like, how does he factor back in again? What happened? Well, you got fucking Carmine, the the um, mob boss, fucking uh, what was his name in Better Call Saul, and fucking who Gus killed in season four of. Oh, uh, the guy with the bell. Yeah. What is this? I don't see him. Okay, in now he was in so Oz too. Um. No, I'm looking at a cast list from Google. Uh, I forget his name. Yeah, I was just there too, and now I'm on the fucking IMDb because I didn't see it on the Googles, and I can't find no. Oh, there he is, Chet Hanks. So that's the one that was in Jamaica going, yo, 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 my N word. Yeah, that idiot. Funny, you click on his, you click on his IMDb, and the first thing that starts showing is a video called Zwi, and it's just black ladies. It's just funny because he's all associated as Mr. Uh, cultural Appropriator. Fucking Tom Hanks. Son of <laughs> you no got Tom idea. Hanks. You got Colin Hanks. Yeah, he's, he's like, oh, okay, he's, yeah, that he, makes he makes sense as Tom Hanks. He created a sir. fucking what do you call it? A, a clone, a clone child. Like all of his sperm came out into what Colin Hanks and made a fucking clone of Tom Hanks. And, <laughs> and then Chet's just like, the yeah, fuck yeah. happened there? Yeah. <laughs> like, what is this? Oh, it's Danny DeVito in Twins. That's what Chet Hanks is. He's the fucking <laughs> leftovers. <laughs> but no, no. Let's get back to the story. Somewhere in this fucking story, because it's like, does he manipulate Lee into having sex with him? I don't know. Who's Lee? The lawyer. Uh, the, the lawyer. Uh, he became the... obsessed with fucking getting Kofi Jones off. Who's which, he? Michael I... Desiato. Yes. He had sex with her. Yes, she told him, "Hey, <laughs> come to bed." And she, and... she didn't get Kofi off, but she did get Michael off. <laughs> Huh. <laughs> well, I, again, I knew can't speak. someone was going to say it. As soon as Lou said it, I knew someone was going to make the joke. I know. I'm a sickos. sickos. <laughs> so she is a. You should have been the one to make it, Charles. It would have been your defining moment. She's also a relatively minor character this season, right? Nah, she's pretty. Uh, she plays pretty heavy. Season one. Yeah. But ultimately, she doesn't really have any effect on anything. I forget yeah. so hard things between seasons. So, like it she's in it a lot, but ultimately, yeah, she doesn't really, uh, yeah, affect much. She tries, but it just doesn't. She, go yeah, she way. tries really hard, but ultimately, I mean, she yeah. Eventually, her. Oh my god! Again, that fucking Nancy bitch. Oh, she was so fucking annoying. Who's Nancy? Al Costello, yeah. The fucking detective that just kept going and and trying to figure things out, like. Telling Elizabeth, the fucking mom, the mother-in-law, about the mom having the affair. Like, yo, certain things... Yeah, like, she has this know. whole conversation with Michael where he explains why he didn't tell this the kid. And then she just goes immediately. And she's like, yeah, you, sh you should tell him. Like, and then she feels guilty. Like, yo, this kid has a certain... Like, if I was Adam... And I didn't. I, I wouldn't want to know my mom's dark secrets. Let me just remember her as the person I remember her as. If she was fucking around on my dad, that's their business. I don't. And then ultimately, like, that. if if he really does need to know eventually, hold that until you've actually figured out the fucking case. Instead, he's been like, "Well, I and, know this is the thing, but I don't know shit else." And when he's done, like, 
yo, when he's a real adult and he can understand the conversation, like, yeah, you're going to tell a 17-year-old he might understand it, but again... Man, he a, he a, seems like the kind of guy... I don't think that brain was ever going to develop that much. Yeah, he was such a pussy. With a that fucking... I swear to God, that scene where he was dancing to Joy Division, where even though it turned out to be all in his head, that was fucking... Oh, that was terrible. And you know, when he like goes into the room, and then there's all like the lights flashing, and he's fucking doing that dance. Oh God! Everybody got to have a Tobey Maguire moment. Yeah. But, you know, <laughs> that you're, that you're, made that made me hope for the ending that we got. <laughs> you're talking about emo that Spider-Man ending we got from was Spider-Man fucking, Three. Yes, yes, yes. yeah. That like they really needed to make him fucking dance, which was just so stupid. That's why that movie sucks. But that ending, I didn't see that coming. I seriously thought, like, yo, to me, Eugene, that I believe that's his name, his character yeah. name, yeah, was pointing the gun straight at Carlo. Like, did it ricochet off or something, or was he just a bad shot? Oh yeah, you could tell by the way he reacted and dropped the gun. That was not he. That's not what he was trying to do. Of course not, but it, it was like it felt like karma in a sense where karma. Oh yeah, it all it all came full circle. Yeah, it, it's a full circle moment, and that's why when I saw that ending, I was like, "Oh shit!" I was like, "I did not expect that," and how fucking Sophia reacted, and the father. The father's like. That's also something I was wondering. What do you think his plan was, or do you think he was just fucking with Michael? It's that I whole thing he where he's like, he's like, he's like, he's just like, hey, I got your kid here. Uh, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna give you some vague threats, but you think he wasn't actually gonna do anything? Because like, you know, obviously a lot of witnesses and shit. But I do wonder if he had some kind of plan that was. Well, he did look a little fruity. Cut short. That, that guy, if you think about uh, it. To me, I don't think he was For gonna do anything because yeah. he might have loved to his do something. daughter. And he oh, wanted mm. to keep his daughter happy. So right. if this idiotic kid, he knows the truth because they, uh, you noticed in the episode, in the final episode, when he's doing the inhaler outside of the courthouse, they pieced it together that it's him, actually. But I don't think he was going to do anything because, you know, the daughter's madly in love with this kid after. Uh, granted, we don't know what the timeline is throughout the whole season. Well, at first, like, I would say the it's, first, it's at four. least. Well, let's just say fucking COVID hit the season. Well, yeah, they talked about it. You can't talk. Can you talk about that on YouTube yet? Hey, just don't give any medical advice. Although even that maybe is cool now. I don't even know. Okay, cool. Damien will know later if he gets hit. (laughs) (laughs) Just want to be sure it's okay to say that COVID was made in the lab in China by uh, international corporate and government agents. Um, I'm saying it's no, okay. No, <laughs> I don't think it gives me Murdoch vibes. Corruption. What's that? Is that a program? I mean, I, 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 I get the, the thing. Oh, it yeah, is the like, murders. it does kind of tie into that and very much that it's just like the way, you know, they're not necessarily, I mean, they're, they're wealthy enough, but the way the father does have the power that he can, to a point, really yeah, cover Michael, up for the son. Michael's the one who offered his services and gave him the logistic, well, gave him the lowdown that Carlo was going to be arrested. Like, yo, I don't see how stupid that kid was literally stupid, too. You see your fucking phone. Is oh, ringing, Carlo was dumb as shit. But you refused. <laughs> he to was answer, fucking. Like, it was rocks I've in that a point where I told my son. Don't ever ignore my call because you don't know what I could be calling you for. Now, if you do send me a text message, like if you're in the middle of something. And if it's one call, that's one thing. Like it could be, you know, just saying hello. If he keeps calling, pick up the fucking phone. Yeah, over there to sing a stupid fucking song. Yeah, but they don't often continue to call in movies and shows. They'll like ring it once, you'll see someone hang up, and then the person, well, they'll ring like three, four, five times, not even, three times. They'll hang up on them, and then the fucking up guy on the other end will just hold there, holding the phone like, no, I've been scorned. And and, and that's that. They can't get in touch with them. Oh, God, and another person that was so fucking annoying was that attorney. Which one? 
trying Carlo. Uh, the one, the prosecutor. Yeah, that prosecutor that? bitch. Oh, I don't know her fucking name. Oh, I don't know mm-hmm. any of thing you guys are talking. Even about. though, like, McGee's the one. an annoying yes, Charles but also completely, guy. completely McGee's, in the right. He's showing us his cat's asshole. <laughs> he doesn't even finish the series, and then while we're talking about it, he just sits there stroking his cat and showing us his asshole. So here's what I think you fucking <laughs> stupid show. Right out. <laughs> show that hole. Show that hole, Fennel. All no, right, that's you. gonna get. But no, the the something. prosecutor's name is McGee. Scoots McGee. Uh something McGee. I don't remember the first name. And I'm sorry, like the. Other Fiona fucking McGee. attorney was a doofus himself, talking all low. Oh, that 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 guy was the worst. Oh my! Like, how do you get like anybody the whole, off? Bro? The whole time he was talking, I'm like, how is nobody like? Can you speak up? I can't fucking hear you on the other side of the room. Honestly, you're, you're almost whispering. I wanted fucking Saul Goodman to come be the attorney. <laughs> So all good, would have ripped this school, this case to shreds. I'm not gonna lie, I felt like so many times watching that because Good and the, the Better Call Saul was going at that time, and I was just like, this. I just need Saul to walk in the fucking room. <laughs> Seriously, that would have been great. Or someone like him. I'm Saul Goodman, attorney at law. I can get your client off in a day. <laughs> Do you think we're ever? This is a little bit of an off-topic topic, but. I mean, and it, this is kind of sort of a courtroom drama show, and uh, but do you think we'll ever get uh, be be able to have another sleazy ambulance chaser lawyer character without it feeling like a Saul ripoff going forward? <sighs> it's it it at some point, but I think it's going to take a while. I think you need a a decent gap. But so he broke the then, mold. Then, he like, broke the mold of a. Uh, that's an archetype. You got to actually really consider what Bob Odenkirk did there. That role of of Saul Goodman is is literally an archetype. I mean, the name is in a book I, I've been reading for too long, uh, Illuminatus trilogy. The main character is Saul Goodman. And that was written in the '60s. Um, the 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 sleazy guy like that. Uh, whatever he is, the ambulance chaser. I lost the phrase hmm. for a second. He's been here the whole time in media, and then this dude comes along, a com- a comedy performer, does a drama show, and breaks the mold of an archetype, and now Again, we can't Charles, have it. No I don't more. know why you would not watch that show. That show—it's it, it's like what Charles did to Fennel's Buttle. It, it literally <laughs> broke the mold. Down in six seasons, the arc of Jimmy McGill turning into Saul of what we get on Breaking Bad is excellent television. I can't believe you, Charles. How he's a normal person. It's better than Breaking Bad. I would agree. Because Breaking sense. Bad, if you think about it, is too dark and too tense. Whereas Better Call Saul delivers the same story in... A lighter a, tone. A lighter tone, but with higher stakes even. Uh, a greater payoff. Far greater. Um, it's just... It's, it's the superior show, in my opinion. Like, there's some great comedy in that show without it ever feeling like they were trying to write it, be like, this is meant to be comedy. It was just, Dude, it, see, it just flowed naturally with everything else. I feel his turn came when Kimmy divorced him. Nah, he it came before that. Kept, nah. Oh, you mean, like, you mean like the, like the ultimate tone? Yes. When he just, like, went just fully into Full things? Full into, like, con man and being a sleazy lawyer because she kept them at bay for a point yeah they ran their little schemes and whatever whatever but once she said she was out she was done my dude went straight hookers (laughs) straight fucking he was sort of just like yeah okay i get it this isn't right for you but for me this is me i think saul broke at the phone call not the divorce but (laughs) <laughs> her response when he calls her in that very final scene. Oh, oh shit. Like in, the, in the future. Mr. Honeycock well, apparently present. has taken over the present. Crab Nation oh, account Jesus. and has commented oh, here. God. Oh, look, and Fennel's coming right to fucking... See, Fennel wants it. Yeah, cover that booty up there, Charles. It says, the, this is a cat wrote this. They hacked into the machine and wrote this. Uh, Richard Grieco said, Mr. Honeycock is coming to break Fennel's hiney hymen. Oh. <laughs> 
you know what? I don't even want to know. I'm not going to carry that conversation. <laughs> I but don't want to know person, either. Thank you. This person here needs to get back on that last season. Oh, well, then I guess we better not talk about how it ends uh, when Saul raped the donkey uh, at a donkey show and is like, ha-ha, who's laughing now, ass? Or something. <laughs> The donkey was Kinky Kelly. He was the filthy oh, stud. Oh, no, now that's. Oh, just, was it no, the other way around? I yes, forget. It was the other. <laughs> Never. It She's was so it was, stupid. So slow. It was Kinky Kelly and the sexy stud. She All right, so, sexy so, stud, so, not filthy so, stud. So, God so, damn it. So hold on, real, real quick. I, I just want to ask for anybody who's who's seen this. I want I wanted to ask uh, when. So when, so when the judge had to, you know, had to get fucking Carlo off. You know, what I'm saying. I mean. Does that does that put you in the feeling that that he was put into that position by Baxter or what you know what I'm or or did he that put decision put in that position? Okay. To me, because Ultimately, remember yeah. at the at the where they, he was gonna take the dude, he took the dude to the boat that he's financing for him and all this and that. Mm. Once he said, "I can get Carlo off," I will do everything in my power to get the case. He put himself in the position to, well, now I got to get this kid off. I offered my services to keep my life. I mean, but okay, to see that—that's the thing. I mean, what, I mean, what the fuck was he supposed to do? You know? That's it. Like, if he if he hadn't offered that, he probably would have been sh- sh- yeah, murdered right there. I mean, Jim. I mean, your, your thoughts? Uh, I think everything that has happened. I, again, this is too hard to talk about. All my thoughts go deep into season two. Um, but it's all my everything's Desiato's fault. He put himself in that position. He didn't know what would happen next. Um, but, but he knew. But he knew the but, kind of person. But he knew the kind of person that that he would ultimately be dealing with. You know, what I'm saying once he realized who. What would have happened if he didn't do it though? If he didn't decide to to, to get Carlo off. Yeah, I'm so proud oh, of I everybody for have. not going on. You've said. You've said that he got Carlo off like four times now, and yeah. nobody has pointed it out. I'm so proud of us all. But I'm, 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 I've been almost having a stroke. <laughs> no point. I, can see, I can see the twitch in your eye. I had to relieve the pressure. Uh, uh, but, but what would have happened if Desi Atto did not do what he was instructed or, or agreed upon? Yes, he got Carlo off for the fifth time. Okay, if he didn't get that young boy off, what would have happened? <laughs> He would have died of fucking holding too much cum. What about yeah, blue, what about what's his death by blue balls? What's his bitch son's name again? Adam. Carlo. Adam. What about Adam? Oh, wait. His, yeah, Adam. Uh, yeah. Would Adam have been killed? I don't think so, because I don't think they would have found out Adam was the inhaler. So he didn't okay. So nobody knew Adam killed Rocco yet. Not until right at the end, basically. Yeah, it was basically. But at the point the of episode. that trial, nobody knew. So no. only the it, it came out died, through the trial, and he was already porking uh, the pelican. Yes. <laughs> okay. So it was uh, it was Michael's decision to have the nine one one call as part of the trial that kind of fucked him over in that sense as well, to them like said, finding it's out. All Michael's fault. And again, without going further, Jimmy definitely would not have killed. Um, Adam, because of Fia. Um, I agree. And, and she would have just went, call, call, dad, call, call. Why, why you kill my boyfriend? Call, call. Because <laughs> she's a pelican. Uh, and then, um, so it, yeah, it, that would have died. And then I, I can't say any further, but I can definitely assure you, I believe, that that would have wrapped that up. Um, that, that bitch Adam would have Beyond, if he had lived into season two, he'd have learned to keep his mouth shut very, very, very fast. I think Sophia was giving him that that thing that I guess helped him stay quiet. Oh, wait, we can talk about it because fucking Lou ruined it for Damien, didn't he? He did. He did. That's right. So that she what gets porked. He porked the pelican oh, yeah. and then puts a, puts he fucking a, dumped puts a baby in, in her. It's got this busted kid. So once they that baby came them. out, yeah, fucking. They never show them porking, but I guess it's implied that they do at some well, point. Well, we don't need to show him porking. We, we know <laughs> she has My, a baby. Yeah, Michael didn't they fuck showed her. Him, 
they know that or did that he? Yeah. Fucking the teacher because oh. you're, you're right and, and i actually lou i found that to be very queer in season two when when she did have the baby because i was like well wait a minute i don't feel that they gave any place or time where that relationship could have evolved to sex yeah they don't they were just like a new love type of thing i i really don't I mean, assume those two had sex but this Unless is, he but, worked her at Wonderland, bent her ass over on that roller coaster. I mean, oh, come right. on, Lou! <laughs> What's worse, the Pelican or Tilly? Tilly? Tilly is the worst thing that's ever happened to televisions. You know how many TVs have fallen off their wall mounts because of Tilly? Because of Ensign Tilly and Star Trek <laughs> Discovery? <laughs> Go ahead, Stone. No, I'm just uh, I was still I mean I, I, again I, I guess I guess I just go back to the fact of I still would have taken my chances just to fucking get him you know what I'm saying fucking admit it and get him in the fucking protective custody if need be but you know oh that's stupid really well again you don't know well that's beyond the point you don't know that um, the Baxters are as connected as they are. You just know that they're very ruthless gangsters, but the the tendrils of their organization are not exposed until season two. Um, and although in in season one, when Kofi goes from. into prison, that guy does like give him the whole speech about <laughs> Baxter juice. Uh, Baxter juice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, yeah, he's like, you know, you can't, you can't get it. You can't escape that Baxter juice. Right, you, <laughs> well, you guys, like you, you guys just freshly watched this show. So, I, where are all the Baxter juice jokes? You guys should have notebooks full of Baxter <laughs> juice jokes right now. Right. <laughs> I mean, they're connected in the fucking prison system. They really are. Because yeah, the, he's talking like. Yeah, I, I mean, I you got a, young, a judge name, getting but... off a young boy in a fucking series with the phrase Baxter juice and you nothing. There's nothing in the notebook somewhere. <laughs> he's not really a no young... Pauly Shore impression. Squeeze the juice. Something he's like not really a juice young... or something like I mean, that. We're really leaning on a young boy kind of hard thing. He's not really a young boy. Oh, you but bet you, know. you want to lean on a hard young boy. I bet. I bet so. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Yeah, yeah. I bet you. I bet you do, gay leader. And you want to just give him a handshake. Yeah, yeah, yeah you, you, say, you want to look hand. at him. Look, You're a fine look, citizen, young look man. At him, look at him, gay. Look, look, look at him. Your hard penis are look. productive <laughs> members of society. Look at Jim Grindle. I don't the, want to suck you now. The next gay porn novelist, Jay, Jim Grindle. Over I here, will never gay. write a gay. P- I have a gay. I can't say the title of it, uh, but there is a gay porn star. Uh, his name is, I think his name is Johnny Dickhard, but his real name is Richard Steele. I forget. But uh, yeah, he he's not a homosexual, he, but he is the AVN's number one gay porn star of the year. Well, he's but he's damn, also a secret agent. Real. But he's damn sure not the Old smartest gay person. Sound like a fucking, fucking dick hard. Wait, oh my god, Jesus Christ! It's his porno name. name. That's the worst name ever. He should just went with a fucking <laughs> real name. I'm trying to think of the name from Boogie Nights. It was like Rock Hodges or something like that. What do you want from me? He's a secret agent. He's only a gay porn star for for money and cocaine. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, Ow! Sure That's the a broken lighter. Huh? You sure it's not? So anyway, the back to the Baxter juice. Yeah, those tendrils, man. Uh, I don't think there's escaping him in what you call it. Where you witness protection program? Where was Mister Stone? Fucking pussy. Pussy. <laughs> Yeah, you would make him be Henry you're Hill. You talking about the old, you're talking about the old, yeah. old fucking judge, man. You talking about the old fucking no. judge and his goddamn son. We expect him to fucking. Yeah, do. but you'd be having him running guy. away and becoming you know, some fucking drunken fucking idiot. Do you guys know that Goodfellas, the way it ends, is such a lie because Henry Hill then just becomes this bizarre drunk character on the Howard Stern show for fucking like a decade <laughs> or two. They had to kick him out of witness protection like twice because he it's kept insane. bragging about him being in the movie. I was just wa- listening to Seriously? Howard 101 yes. yesterday and Henry Hill was on and he was uh, literally sounded like Ray Liotta and some guy was fucking like threatening him or whatever. Oh, what would Jimmy say about this? What would the other guy, the other Pauly or whatever I think? And he was just going, Pauly's dead. <laughs> Jimmy's dead. <laughs> and it was just like such a bizarre if you think about the context of that to the ending of the movie, add it on in your mind. It really makes it very fun. 
<laughs> You're psycho. Well, all pal. right. You're a psycho. They're what? all psycho. It, 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 They're all psycho. You telling me that doesn't fit that movie? You're oh yeah, telling I mean, me that you can't see Ray Liotta still standing on oh, that I lawn can. in the end. I absolutely can. Just screaming. <laughs> I think Jamie's dead on the phone to the Howard Stern show. Like, come on. Drunk off his ass. <laughs> eating his noodles and ketchup. Yeah, I was going to say noodles and ketchup, but I wasn't sure if that was my blue heaven or not. It's both. It was <laughs> Girls, what'd you think? Like when I got here, I ordered spaghetti marinara or something. I got noodles and ketchup. Egg noodles. Just think of that. The way it's just so noodles. poetic. It ends so poetically. But then the joke is what happens after. That's what makes it better. So, Charles, who cares about what Stone's talking about? <laughs> Lou wants to talk to Charles now, who hasn't said a word. This whole segment. What? Just been showing his cat's asshole. <laughs> I'm just going to sit around and lick the cat's butt. Lou, you know Charles didn't watch it. That's he the Wikipedia'd point. it. Where the fuck is look, you made Stone leave. All right, look. I thought it. I thought the best part of the entire series is when Brian Cranston entered the scene. He entered and the said, young... And entered the scene and said, "All right, everybody, it's your honoring time. It's cock time. Oh, <laughs> it's that. your honoring time. That's that was a very good scene. Yeah, I missed that scene. I guess I wasn't paying attention. It was very good. And then he banged his gavel and did a little funny dance. And then he said, $55 dollars uh, plus court costs.' Yeah, is that no? He said not- fifty-five dollars and time served. That's what he did." It's Every like, verdict. Oh, he just banged his gavel, did a dance, said $55, time served. The way the show was lead, it made reference. you lead think that the jury was going to convict this fucker. I thought they were going to say guilty. You know what I... But, 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 but I really liked, though, cause, and then we, that, that big, tall, bald bailiff in the show, uh, he was very underused, um, and if they would have convicted him as guilty... Maybe we could have had more scenes with him, but he was really good. I think he called him Bull. Yeah, the, the bailiff I thought was pretty cool, but I mean, it's a bailiff. I mean, there's not going to get a they're not going to yeah, get a like, whole lot of. Screen they had like a whole subplot that he was actually from Jupiter, and he actually was. You found out in the finale because he went off with two old men. He thought it was Jupiter, Florida, but it was actually Jupiter, the planet, because he was tall enough to reach stuff on the, on the high shelves. Yo, the dr- the dog drugs really <laughs> did fuck up Chet. Like, had dog him drugs? The only drugs he had was his dog's drugs. Chet, Chet Hanks yep. was, doing his, was doing his dog's drugs. Yes, Brian Cranston mixed his dog's drugs into the water. He was drinking so much of that water that it started to fuck with him. Oh, and the program. Yes. <laughs> I thought you meant in the I real mean, world. I mean, that wouldn't surprise me. That's why I did. I was, I was like, hold on. <laughs> Chet Hanks probably does some weird fucking. Why does he get special life? privilege? He's Chet, no big deal. Call him Joey. Joey had a fucked up ankle, though, man. Like, yo, you're the police department. You ain't gonna get him some medical attention? <laughs> <laughs> that thing looked like a fucking blimp. You know, Brian, uh, I'm gonna get political for a second, Charles Whedon. You're just gonna have to hold your little titties. Uh, Brian Cranston does all of his whining and complaining uh, with his whole fucking BLM, the terrorist organization talk and his whole, uh, what's he talk about, uh, critical race theory and and his super wokeness and white privilege, etc. His his pushing of racism, uh, he really presented a story that doesn't demonize the pol- like oh yeah you get again i can't talk as we're going at the season two but they touch on it you see some police corruption i mean but they're all they- i mean i mean essentially <clears throat> that that's what i was kind of getting to without without ruining too much i mean essentially where at least i get to is that everybody fucking seems awful right that's what i'm that's exactly what i was going to say next is that they don't fucking present them in a really horrible way. It's just like no, sort of they presented part of the like, game there. Yeah. There's shit people here. There's also shit people over there and over that's, here. But that but that's the thing sometimes. Like that like that is even as a as a lifetime gamer for me, that's sort of like oh. the, the thing that I have conflict with with like games like like GTA. I, I like it for entertainment value, but overall GTA as a game, is way more 
uh, they talk way more about real issues than this fucking show did. From, okay. by the way, just to say, please don't forget what you were saying, but Brian Cranston, the guy who is so patting himself on the back over his choices of roles, I only take roles that are of social value. He's like one of these cocksuckers now. And, and, and okay, well, where's your fucking... GTA has more social poignancy than this, more social truth than this fucking show did. But I'm sorry, you were saying... I'm, okay, I mean, but but still, I would say, um, but still, I would say with GTA, it was like it, it's just for me, like it's just like with, with no with no discernible like good guy, like everybody, like in GTA, everybody's a bad guy, and it's just you you play the guy who's trying to be who's trying to get the most points at being, you know, what I'm saying one of the shit bad guys, and it's just like. And that's kind of like where, where I find myself when it comes to fucking your honor. It seems like everybody, even the people who seem like they're trying to, they're trying to do good in the situation, they just seem like they're going about it in an awful way. The it's lawyer, the lawyer lady, I guess her name was Lee. No, well, yeah, her. I mean, you can say she's the only good guy in the program. Also, the prosecutor, though, she was very much just like, she just wanted to... Yeah, she seemed genuinely who's about the justice. I don't know who's who. The one who uh, pr was prosecuting the like the trial at the end but, of the well, season. The legal team was, you know what? That actually even more validates my point because this is bullshit. The okay. legal team was was like not corrupt at all. The lawyers were all honorable, duty bound people, and so were the judges. And that's some fu fucking bullshit. Because let me tell you how <laughs> crooked judges are. A fucking uh, on a local and a fucking higher level. Dude, the judges are the most crooked animals on this fucking planet. We can we can do a show about crooked judges through history, and you we can we would never ever run out of content, including till today. <laughs> hey, hey, you know you know what's funny you know what's funny about that, Jim, is that um. I saw an episode of... It's of not Dayton. funny, Mr. Stone, because we're talking judges so crooked that for 30 years leading up until, like, the aughts, not far ago, you want to talk about generational, no, like a spit away. You can spit spit out of your mouth and reach that in the point in time of the where judges were, were imprisoning children by making stuff up simply to funnel money in this giant laundering scheme that just went on and on and on. And it was so, uh, so many levels and it was so publicly exposed and nobody cares. And these judges still do crooked things daily. But I'm sorry, you were saying. No, it is funny. Go on. <laughs> I just wanted to say that it's hilarious. <laughs> Didn't mean comedy stand up, okay? Just I know. I just yeah. wanted to point that out. I happened to see an episode of Dateline. <laughs> you know, say, where this that corrupt. Where, where this federal judge, you know, say ironically out of Jersey, this female Latino federal judge out of Jersey, um, and basically I I feel like, you know, I feel like it put a hit out, you know what I'm saying, on her fucking husband and son. And got and got another federal judge hit. You know what I'm saying? All you know what I'm saying? All the basically covered the situation up. It was fucking crazy. It, I mean, probably they, fucking. They didn't. What are you talking about? I don't know. Yeah, it like a fucking scandal. No. Definitely you know what's not. funny? And again, I cannot say much, but as you know, Stone, they touch on a, a similar storyline to what you're describing right now in season two, and. Still, they don't at all make it like that. They like even in in that, they still don't demonize the police in any sort of way. Like uh, they really try to hammer home that this corruption is very much a an individual thing, rogue agents, and it, that it is not. Mm, mm, I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I definitely didn't. I definitely didn't get that sense in the first. In the first couple of episodes, you know, because I'm, I'm still, I'm still like, I'm basically down to maybe the last two or three of season two. And um, look at that, Charles. This man is almost done with season two, and we ain't even started yet. Fucking piece of shit. He's almost as bad as Charles for not finishing season one, which is I worse. Know. I mean, come on, two two ends of a spectrum. We should make a yin yang out of these two guys' faces. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> you are almost done, and he's not finished. 
<laughs> you're almost you're you're way far ahead, and he's way far behind. I'm saying, you know, turtle and hair. We should make a yin yang symbol out of your two faces. I'm gonna and, I'm gonna do it right now. But eventually he but but, but eventually he wins the race somehow. So that doesn't look good. Who, on who me. said he's the turtle? Oh yeah, he's the turtle. <laughs> uh, huh, but I, right, but right. but I would say but but I would say at least in the first <laughs> at least in the first couple of episodes of season two, I would definitely feel I definitely felt like. It was it was definitely showing me that it was that New Orleans. I mean, because New Orleans, like I said, the way they depicted New Orleans here is it seemed like it's a lot the way they depicted New Orleans and fucking even in the fucking NCIS New Orleans show. It seems like this everybody's like fucked up and 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 the few people and the few people that you know what I'm saying that, that that seem to be trying to do some good are they seem to be on the fucking outer edge. You know what I'm saying? If any fucking thing. I never seen NC. Uh, what was it? NCIS New Orleans. Yeah, uh, I didn't yeah, I see want, that. I don't. I watch didn't that see part. that. I was thinking about the fentanyl, the way they presented the fentanyl and like patches. Like, oh shit! Never mind. Like, that's season two. Sorry. No, it was in season one. Is season it? one. Um. And now Carlo, Carlo and Joey have fentanyl. They have fentanyl. Like, well, patches. then they 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 revisit fentanyl in a much larger way in season two. In a much larger scale. It plays he- much heavier into the plot. Oh, it must be a Carlo thing. No, mm. no, and that's the thing. Like, even oh. with that, they play that very individualistically, um, because there's dissent amongst those doing it. If you think about what I'm saying, Stone, like the person it, they make that fentanyl distribution thing ha- occur as if it as if it's just the doing of one person and that even in that one person's organization there is dissent when where there's fentanyl there is a million hands there's a lot of hands and they go they go to the pharmaceutical companies they go to the government they go fucking deep oh, so, i get i get it but i guess they were mainly pointing to the you know what I'm saying the, the shit that was making the headlines if you know what I mean yeah yeah well I'm just saying that Brian Cranston's a bitch and he doesn't okay. live up to the shit he says I mean yeah they're, they're not I mean yeah they're playing they're, he's they're a playing fat into, stupid bitch I he's mean a puta they, sucia he's I would a puta probably, sucia I mean I would I would definitely feel like if more than anything they play more into yeah a, whatever that means they play more into an overall situation of like. Like th- this is what you're used to seeing, so we'll, we'll kind of play into the whole thing of what you're used to seeing. Yeah, like I mean, I think in the way what you're saying, the individualist thing, but it's more of like, you know, I, I guess I guess individual or more like stereotypical if that helps some other people out to kind of to kind of get what he's saying. Like, like yeah, you're used to seeing some of these people. You're you're used to seeing that that guy who seems to be you know in bed with with some sort of you know underworld you know what I'm saying figure or something like that in some way. You know, and seem to be caught between a rock and a hard place, and you know, and, and it's all you know. And, but there's always these, you know, and it's always there's always one, you know, detective that seems to be, you know, say in bed with, you know, say with one of the underworld types too, and, and you know what I'm saying and it's just, I get, you know, so, so I get what he's saying on that, but you know, so, so it's more of like a, more of a stereotypical. These people are gonna be here. It's not digging deeper into what's you know what I'm saying what's really what, what it's really all about and how far it goes and it's really kind of digging deep into the story but it's more playing into the you know this story you know we'll just kind of play into this and how this works into this kind of world and how it affects this particular main character you know what I'm saying Michael here so so I, I guess I kind of get that if that's what you're saying who said that oh god it's you the fuck that's what I'm saying. <laughs> well, they should be talking to you. You know, that I sounds... Knew, I, knew, a, I knew that. You know, that sounds a lot like Randy Marsh from South Park. But like, I know, that's what I'm saying. Gah. I think it's very interesting how for like the last six seasons or more of South what Park, they made, they made Randy the star. I think that's pretty interesting, how they pivoted. <laughs> And, and and that shows that show can go on for 40 50 more years it could be one day about big big gay al could come back and he could be like the main character for fucking eight seasons or or the fucking hillbilly and this and a trachea guy maybe they'll bring them back one day and they'll just be the headliner Ned. Like randy is now 
Fantastico. I miss Ned. Maybe oh. what is what is it? Dick Bear Pig Man Pig Man Man Dick Bear Pig. Pig. Man, man Bear Pig. Pig. There's no dicks in there. Oh. oh my fucking oh, god. Huff man, they Huff just, bear, Huff Pig. They, they just recently did like a whole freaking special involving Man Bear Pig. Yeah, but no, yeah, but that was different. They're gonna well that man even proved. Bear now they're gonna bring it back. Man Bear Pig is gonna move in town, is gonna be a fucking prominent member, is gonna take over the big fat red haired lady's position in the town. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be a huge man bear pig uh, centric eight season arc. It's coming. Just watch. PC, I mean, PC man bear pig does out. have kids, so the there you family go. They're gonna to go town. to school. Yep, and then man bear pig's gonna make trouble for PC principal. Then man bear pig will eat PC principal, uh, and and it's gonna be chaos. Chaos will ensue. So what's behind the red door in Star Trek? That's the million dollars. This question. is not Alpha Pod Rants. There's well, a man bitch, with I no ain't eyes. Been, I ain't been on Alpha Pod Rants for two weeks. So you know what? If I want to talk Star Trek, it's I the man can. with no eyes. It's the man with no eyes. I refuse. I'm gonna leave now. Perfect time to leave. I'm gonna fucking protest this because he left me alone with Luke. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just well, kidding. You know, Luke is wonderful on night creeps, mostly. There's Why there's, is he so bad on Alpha Pod Rants? Oh. <laughs> There's a dynamic in the household where it's keeping me from joining that show. Yeah, well, you need to headlock that dynamic, and you need to stranglehold it and fucking well, say, Yo, it's hard, hard bitch, take this elbow. Damien doesn't pay me well. Damien don't pay That's me at right. all yet. No, will right. I ever. Producer, uh, 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 the producer of this program, Anthony Zenhauser, <laughs> because that's what that says right there. That Anthony Zenhauser is the producer of this program, uh, so that's him commenting. Uh, he just said, "Luke quit Alpha. He gave up his right to talk about Star Trek." I don't think so. Yeah, I think I'm so. A god, I could talk whatever I want. No, I want how I no. Want. Steve's the god, not you, no more. <laughs> Steve and Lou, if you want to get paid, stop taking shits on shows. Steve Conti took your shit. position. He started a show about shit, Lou. He took your name, and then he started a show about shit. He wants to be you. He wa He thinks there's enough room inside of you to crawl up and get cozy. Dude, <laughs> the shit I took this morning was massive. Wow. Well, too bad you don't have a show on Compound Media to talk about it like the real the God does. I don't want no fucking show on Cuck House Media. I got a show on the DJR Network. Look at you. You even changed your name. You says, I am the Lou God. I am the God. No, Lou. you're Lou the God, and you just even wrote your name wrong, and therefore oh. you just literally handed the throne to this fucking kid. A child. A child. A, pe a mere peasant in your court, and you handed him the crown. Yo, Jim, we need a fucking intro out for, and an outro, dude. Do your job. For this program? Yes. I, I, my last great piece of work was for your LSD program. I, I, I don't, I, I don't think I can make program. anything good again. That was the best thing I've ever made. I had well, to point out that I made that because too. it's so good. It took like so, it so long much. to make it. But do we have anything else on your honor? No. Um, season would... two coming soon. Will yeah, Charles, the question of the day will be: Will Charles finish season two? Will he take the advice from Lou the God, watching two episodes a day from Monday to Friday to make it done? There it goes. <gasps> That's the million the dollar question. Or will he just sit back and relax with his nerd group and talk shit and die? No I love. have faith in Charles. I think that once he finishes season one. And gets into season two. I think he's going to be hooked because it's that good. In Are you going to finish season one? He's Charles? not even listening to you. Just oh, end oh, the show. I, I thought you were talking to Jim. <laughs> Jim finished pulp season. Are you going to finish season one? Yes, That's I'm going to. I'm going to go back to it as soon as we're done here. Ah, yeah. Are you going to take my advice into season two and try to do two episodes a day? Actually, oh. I'm going to go. I'm going to start season two as soon as I'm done with season one. <gasps> Oh my God, I'm so surprised. You yeah. know what else is surprising, ladies and gentlemen? Isaiah Mullins has a PS5. He got one before Jim, which is a little shocking. Why? I don't. I don't want a PS5. Oh, now you don't. Now you. I don't never did. Well, Bitch, he's crossing swords on the PC. Yeah, that was because we finally did decide to get one, and we just haven't yet. Uh, oh, I don't even remember why, though. You could be playing fucking trial, 
trial ride, whatever the fuck that free game is, with us. Well, whatever. Uh, no, well, just, ladies I... and gentlemen, this has been another fine production brought to you by the old studio. Uh, where is the new LSD studio right here? I'm going to switch it for a second and give you such a lovely outro.